Alrighty, guys. So, last time, you guys took the crystal carriage that Zybilna had magically enchanted, and you uh, entrusted Elkhorn to expertly fly it through the storm and land perfectly in between two of the towers, allowing you guys to uh, gracefully lead in down the steps. Upon entering, you guys see that Motherhorn, uh, the amphitheater, is truly just a stage with many seats. And as you guys entered as stealthily as possible, you casted haste on Gleam, uh, as well as invisibility, so that she was able to get to her sister with as much as quickly as possible. Once you guys entered, Endolin uh, greeted you all as she was obviously expecting you guys. You guys exchanged some some words about how you were here to uh, rescue Zybilna. Um, Endolin made it clear that she did had no love in her heart for her uh, adopted sister and that she did not appreciate you throwing the Baba Yaga's name around. Mm -hmm. uh, so you guys quickly jumped into battle and within a few rounds, you guys realized that you had been accompanied not just by the League of Malevolence, uh, which you had fought some of them before and recognized, but also some newcomers, uh, none other than the Valor's Call, or namely Molliver and Elkhorn's old adventuring party, including Mercyon, who had been captured by Endolin. Um, you guys spent a couple rounds uh, fighting Tooth and Nail. Uh, Meow Wolf was able to uh, cast Giant Insect and get some flanking going on. However, and uh, you guys were able to down the bugbear that was seemingly assisting Endolin, as well as um, as well as take care of Warduke by polymorphing him into a beetle and having Snoodles chomp on him. Incredibly inspired move. Unfortunately, in the round before we left off, Mercy on the Cleric went down much to the duress of Molliver and Elkhorn. So, um, go ahead and guys, just give me a history check just off the top. History check, bow. Okay, so sorry, noob moment with my dice. I just have to roll a 20, get their score, and then add whatever my modifier is. Correct. Thank you. I got an 18. Wait. Wow, okay. I got 11 plus 4. 15. Nice. Is this for everyone? Yeah. Like, like even Ringle Run? Or... Oh, yeah. No, just <laughs> just oh, for okay. you guys to, okay. uh, to ascertain uh, anything you can about Valor's Call and um, the League of Malevolence. 18. Okay, Ooh. great. Um, Zindi, you were sort of isolated within the elven community that you grew up in, but you had heard of Valor's Call as well as the League of Malevolence. Uh, you remember Harper telling you that the League, that the League did have something to do with Zybilna's disappearance and that they were present on the night the castle fell. Of course, Elkhorn and Molliver had kind of, in passing, mentioned Valor's Call, particularly Mercyon, um, and you know that Ringle Run was the founder of Valor's Call. Uh, Meowwolf and Harper, uh, Harper, you're a little bit more intimate with with uh, Valor's Call, as well as the League of Malevolence. You have met all of them personally before. Uh, the the League of Malevolence had been 
invited around to hopefully garner some sort of tru- truce um, but between the two, but was unsuccessful, and they were actually there on a ruse to sort of, like, infiltrate the castle. Um, Meow Wolf, uh, you remember that, uh, in your previous battles with them, uh, with War Duke and Zorak, that Harper had mentioned they were very formidable, formidable, and, uh, that Zorak had been hunting her. And you also know that uh, Molliver and Elkhorn ha- both has have said on different occasions that they would lay down their life to save um, Mercyon. And as you sort of look over to them, once you guys see Mercy on fall. You see Molliver go several shades uh, lighter than she normally is. Um, Elkhorn seems to steal himself and he lets out like a harrowing battle cry. And uh, Molliver steals herself as well as she uh, seems intent on killing Zorak and uh, rushing up to save her lady love. Hmm. All right. So. Doodle doodle do. That is Endolin's turn. All right. So. Endolin. She has just seen uh, the giant centipedes in front of her be displaced. Um, and she is going to... I think she puppeteered. Do-do-do. Uh, she's going to attack Strongheart. Since that is who is in front of her, uh, Gleam is still invisible, and Glister oh. and her have like run off of a uh, stage left. So she's a little less. She she just she just knows that uh, Glister is running off, which is kind of what she expects her to do. Um. All right, so she's gonna puppet puppeteer's lash on Strongheart. Okay. That is a unnatural 20 to hit. Uh, I'm assuming that hits Jasmine. It did it hit me? Wait, I don't uh, understand. Strong, Strongheart, sorry. Oh, what do I have to roll for that? Oh, uh, his, just check, just go ahead and check his AC. I see here it is 20, so that does. Oh, it's 20. It. Yeah. Wah, wah. <laughs> womp, womp. Okay. Uh, that okay. is a womp indeed. Okay, so what's the damage? All right, so she track. is going to roll 4d6. Yeah. Oh. Uh, and he no, is also no, going oh, to no. move in any direction. Okay. Um, okay, so seven, eight, nine. Okay, so he's gonna take 13 psychic damage, which I will notate here. Okay. Ooh, that's a lot. How does psychic damage differ, like, functionally than um, normal damage? Does it, like, stick around? So, sometimes uh, people will have immunities or resistances to specific damage. Understood. Yeah, psychic okay. damage tends to be a really uh uh un unpopular not unpopular uh a rare one to be immune to um she's mm-hmm. also gonna hit hit again because she gets multi-attack on this that wow. is only a 12 to hit so that doesn't hit um so he takes the 13 damage and then he is gonna move 10 feet 
horizontally. Uh, so she's okay, gonna move I... him um, right there. Damn. Okay. okay. So he's still standing. I'm still standing. Um, okay. and he in pain winces and goes, "Oh no! Oh no! Oh no!" Although I am a champion of justice, I did not champion over that hit. And he holds his um, his head <laughs> as he bleeds. I Damn. love that. <laughs> I'm reading directly. I'm gaining inspiration directly from his character sheet. <laughs> That's perfect. Amazing. Okay, Zarak is uh fucking had it with Molly vs. shit, so he is going to dagger dagger. Um, that is. A f- 15 to hit. Let's see if that hits. Mollyver, fuck, that does hit. Okay, so one hit on Mollyver, and that hits her again, so he does two times the damage, so that is 2d4. Um, 2d4. But he doesn't get extra because he has under a certain amount of hit points, so he is hurting. He's pretty bloody. Um, okay, so six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, not terrible for Molliver, uh, who hasn't been hit yet, it looks like. Um, so he stabs her, and Molliver uh, lets out a, a, a pain screen, but her eyes, like, if looks could kill, Zorak would be dead. <laughs> Okay, that is going to be Cindy's turn. All right. Okay, let's see. So, I have a bunch of hoes right in front of me. Um, All of the hoes. Who, who is this This dude? Oh, there's like, okay, there's like the giant, there's this orc, orc thing to my right. Um... I am gonna go for a. Oh, bugbear! Bugbear is dead. That is my. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, <laughs> he okay. dead on the ground. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I thought we killed him last time. Okay, there's this dude right directly in front of me with like the like the bo- Yes, your boys are up. Yeah. Um. Okay. Um. Uh, he's not a friend, right? Sorry. Not a friend. <laughs> okay, a foe, as we call them. Yeah. Okay. Um, I have, uh, I thought I had double attack. I don't. Fine. Okay. I'm going to use my, um, oh, I have spell. Thought we. Um, I'm a cloud of daggers at the fourth level, this bitch. Um, in front Hell of yeah. me. Um, okay. Cast. Yeah. Is that an area of effect spell, or is that just on him? Um, uh, is that something I choose? It's an area of effect. Okay, um, that would probably hit your two friends. You think so? Okay, that's usually how Cloud of Daggers works. Um, okay. Arr, la 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 la. Um, I just imagine like Zindi being like, "Okay, hold on." <laughs> Let me think I about use, this I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Cast. I'm sorry. No, I like literally, good. literally in Baldur's Gate, I do the same ass thing. I'll like cast, like, um, uh, I will cast it and it, I will like hurt myself in the process. But I'm like, it was worth it. <laughs> I cast fireball, set um, the door myself. <laughs> it's 60, I think I can do it 60 feet. Hold on, let me measure where I'm at, the distance. Um,. How far is mm, too far? Okay. Um, who, who are the who's the other closest like enemy besides? Oh, there's uh, you know that dude, this dude right in front of uh, Kellic, and there's Ring also Ringlehorn. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Up okay. top um, of Ringle Run. Yeah, he's thirty-five feet away. Totally. Okay, thirty-five that. feet. Okay. Well. I don't feel that bad about Ringle Run getting stuck in all oh, but he but Keeks would get hit. Oh, hit <laughs> You're like, and this old man, but Keeks. But Keeks. <gasps> Not Keeks. Okay, how about this dude? Sorry. Sorry everybody. Oh 55 feet. Sweet. Okay. The dude to the left of uh 
to the left of a uh, strong heart. Mm-hmm. Um, yes, I'm Kelly. going to gonna cloud of daggers. Hip. Let's do it. Okay. Cloud of daggers. Technically, just just so we know, this is a ring of invulnerability around Ringle Run. So technically, Keeks is in that right now. So tech, I just oh, want to okay. say, technically, you can hit like. what's his face, Zerg- uh, Zergosh. But uh, Kellic is looking really bad, so it's probably but, strategically better. Let's do it. Okay. Okay. Do I need to roll anything? Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, you're gonna. Well, uh, let's see. This you have to roll. Of daggers. Yeah. I'm sure you. I'm sure you do. Uh, oh no. Uh, please. let's see here. You feel I the feel the air creature. Creature. Oh uh, no! Creature it just it just hits. Very oh, yeah. nice. That's okay. Okay. Takes four d. Oh, but my okay. I have it says eight d four. Um, at higher levels. Okay. Nice. Yeah, so... Okay. 8d4 is what roll. you're gonna roll. <laughs> Get wrecked, dude. Worth it. 20. Is 20 he dead? damage? Oh, yeah. Okay. I'm pretty sure he's dead now. Yes, he is. Okay. Describe how uh, this cloud of daggers like forms out of Zindi and how Kellic sure. falls within. So. As we know, Zindi doesn't have um, uh, that many offensive spells, so they've been kind of, you know, brushing up, bit, kind of on after looking at some scrolls from Molly's house, and you know, most of their most of their magic has been song and dance, inspiration and healing. But they thought, you know what, it'd be good to have like, some good offensive um, out on their uh, in their back pocket, so. Um, Zindi kind of does like a little like twirl, a flourish, and yells, "Clap, yeah, girl!" Which I don't think you have to do in uh, the thing, but <laughs> Zindi does anyways. For like, the I don't effect. know if it needs uh, um, <laughs> somatics, but <laughs> um, the cloud appears around what's his name? Kellic. Kellic just appears around Kellic and just in a. Huge burst starts slicing through his flesh. It's pretty gruesome. I mean, it is a cloud of daggers uh, cutting into his raw body meat sack of human, and there's just kind of blood goes everywhere. He screams and he falls to the ground dead. Yeah, and that is a concentration spell, so technically it uh, stays up. Okay, yep, so, it will, for anybody that goes through it. For anyone that is dumb enough to run through it, it's it's there. Um, sick. And that is going to be Snoodles' turn. Mm-hmm. Snoodles' is... Oh, I'm just going to roll uh, the d20. No ads, because Snoodle is just... Snoodles. <laughs> <laughs> And Snoodles is being Snoodles, rolls a seven. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what's he trying to do? Snoodles. <laughs> After having eaten the beetle, uh, Snoodles is feeling pretty good about their protein intake. <laughs> <laughs> so literally, he tries to go for a chomp, but he's like, oh, I can do it too. <laughs> he just burps. <laughs> Incredible. Fantastic. Of course. Of course, well, Noodle spends his action burping. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh. So, uh, do you want do you want to move him or anything else? Yeah, so if you want to go ahead and take a look at the map. He's right here. Um, I'm going... Uh, is it, who's, uh, what's this green, um, marker right here? That's one of them big old centipedes. Ah, great. The red centipedes so. are also there. <laughs> I just didn't want to change the colors all the time. <laughs> oh, got it. Got it. So there are, all, all, there's still four centipedes left. Yeah. In front of you guys. Wait, wait, do I get advantage then because I'm flanking? 
Yeah, yeah. If you want to hit Zorak, yeah, go ahead. Try, try one more time. Yeah. He burps. Okay, so he burps, and then he's yeah. like, "Uh, oh, I guess I'll try again." <laughs> yeah, he was like, "Give it another go." <laughs> there we are, and it's a critical, not good. It's a, <laughs> a one. <laughs> critical one. Oh god, that's so <laughs> funny for no reason. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> Absolutely crucial this teenage uh, crocodile because of has course. been. Yeah, because of course like would it be a battle without Snoodles just doing some Hey, Snoodles did his job. He ate War Duke. That's what he's here for. Eat it. Eat it. <laughs> oh yeah, he burps and he is feeling pretty good. But he is not attacking. Okay. Um, move him if you wish. Um, oh as let's, he, as he, uh, uh, oh, but I guess he would get an opportunity attack if you did move him. Oh, uh, yeah, I can. Yeah. So, JK, JK. Okay, so you guys see, uh, uh, the twins have fully moved off into the rafters. Um, and, uh, uh, you see... You see them both reappear in, um, together as they swing across the stage, and you hear Glister, who sounds remarkably like Gleam, but maybe a little bit more confident, and, uh, she screams out to Endelin, GET FUCKED, YOU EVIL HAG! And she is going to sunray this bitch. Um, let's see what she rolls. Okay. Endelin's AC is I, I suppose. Okay, fuck yeah, she hits. Um, and she's gonna do 2d8 of demo plus three. Okay, that's eight, nine, that's ten, eight. eleven damage eight. to Endolin. And let's see what she gets to wisdom. Okay, she gets a plus three to that wisdom save. Oh, shit. Okay. You guys, you, you guys, guys hear Glister, like, shout out at Endolin and you guys see the twins in an absolutely beautiful acrobatic moment. They swing out uh, on some ropes and you see Gleam do a triple tumble over Endolin and uh, catch another rope on the other side and you see Glister sort of like a blinding light shoots out of her hand and you hear Endolin let out a horrific wail. Ah! Uh, Endolin is blind. Or oh, no. yeah. Um, uh, uh, can I do anything even though it's not my turn? No, you, I mean, you can, uh, you can say something. Like, okay, okay, um, Zindi pulls out their, their um, their, uh, their, their pan flute and like <laughs> kind of waves at Gleam and points and is like trying to be like now now or wait <laughs> uh uh you hear from from far off you hear the twins in sync go now uh okay um Zindi starts playing the exact tune that they had previously discussed with Gleam. Um, uh, note for note. Perfectly. Okay. Awesome. No sound. <laughs> no sound. Yeah. Uh, amazing. Imagine it. <laughs> We're imagining a beautiful... Uh, 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 it's, a, it's a haunting tune. It's, it's both beautiful, but also, like, me melancholy. Melancholy. Um, and that is gonna end her turn. All right, so you guys see, um, this, uh, a little bit shorter, um, woman. She has a very ornate, elaborate headdress on her head, 
and she leers at you guys from way down and uh you can just see her like sneer at you guys um and let's see what she's gonna do um she is going to You guys look at her and you all of a sudden you hear like a click and you don't see her anymore. Oh. God damn it. Oh my. <sighs> okay, so she is invisible to you guys. Okay. And that's gonna be Elkhorn's turn. Emma, go ahead. Uh, okay. Elkhorn on the map. No, 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 no. Where is he? Is he? Is he he is next to Zindi. That's Zorak, yeah. So Elkhorn's like right next to him. Zorak looks really fucked want. up. Yeah. This one right here. Yes. Um, he. Is there any enemies in front of him? No opportunity attack? Nope. Well, uh, Zorak is, yeah. Oh, so that, the one right in front of him. Yeah, yeah, to the right of him, I should say, but. The right. Yeah. Alright, so he takes a look at Zorak, and uh, he's uh, gonna go. He's gonna use his uh, long sword. Uh, he's. Yeah, he's a. Uh, He's gonna use his, his long sword to attack. Uh, he's so angry uh, that he's watching uh, people in the fight fall that he cares about. And he's like, You son of a bitch, I'll get you good! <laughs> and it looks like he rolled a nine. With no plus? Wait. Wait, 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 wait. It was, no, it was a plus one, but it's still flanking, so he gets another Okay, he does get advantage. Yep, he's still flanking. So let's do it again. Wait, did I do it right? Is it just a plus? Not, you, you just, you just roll the B, right? Um, yeah. his long, okay, so he can make a, he can make a multi-attack. And he has a plus three to his dagger and a plus two to his longsword. Oh, on this it's uh, plus one. So I guess I, he rolled a 13. On Zorak. Let's see here. Oh, Oof. Oof. You see what? Elkhorn, um, <laughs> like, just angry Ooh. and... And like you see, you see his beard starts to get a little wet because he's like sobbing a little, and he wildly swings its rock and just misses. Damn it! Oof. Alrighty. Um, but okay, so you rolled with advantage, right? So you can make, yes. you can, you can try again, because he gets two attacks. Oh, oh thank oh. God! Okay, let's do it again. Oh God. Ten. It, uh, Elkhorn just, is just it, like beside himself. Uh, you son of a bitch! And he's just—he has his eyes closed because he never cries. <laughs> <laughs> so he's so like for the first time you just see him wildly swinging because uh, the, the Elkhorn is not a crier. And he's not a crier, and, he, and you see him, and he's ah, like just going just back. wailing. <laughs> oh, I feel so bad for Elcor right now. <laughs> okay, that is Juniper Berry's turn. Woo! Hell yeah! Okay, so um, oh Jesus, sorry. Okay, okay, okay. So Juniper's, like, um, not really up in the mix, so she pretty much has, yeah. like, freedom of movement here. Are these, sorry, these red are centipedes that are currently there? Yeah, and, and the centipedes, centipedes are, are giant, but on your side. Oh, they're on our side. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Okay, she is going to move then next to Englehorn. 
<laughs> I'm mixing up two names. I am so bad with these, <laughs> these names. I'm so sorry. Next to next to Keeks and this and this wizard. Um, no. Okay, Ringle Run. It. Yeah, um, Ringle Run. <laughs> so sorry. To, up here. Absolutely, like such a wizard name, right? Okay. Cool. Um. And she is going to go for a. Um, Oh my god, why is this so hard to read? Hold on, I might need to pull up a different version of her um, her chart, because this one is so blurry. Um, my bad. I should have made sure it was legible prior to... Um, okay. Yeah, it is it is a... When you pull it up in a different... A different like When you pull it up in the browser, it like, gets a little bit it's hard a little, to read. Yeah. Um, well, okay, she has like the the um the like multi attack, um which is right. like right the claw and the um and right. the chomp and claw. So, so she can the really the only thing she can do is dash to get to uh, Zergosh over here. Oh, is movement a separate um separate action? Well, she can't. Uh, her movement speed's only thirty feet, so thirty feet is like basically oh, two ringle right. run, and then she'd have to move. Yeah. She, if she dashes, that's another thirty feet, and then she can't take another action. Oh, it's but that. Next, he's but, that far. but next turn, she'll be right. Okay, okay, him. cool, cool, cool. Um, and he, okay. uh, she he's carrying a staff. She so dashes. A, a, okay, a so spellcaster. She she dashes and like like roars at uh, at Zergash. Um, Just just gets in his face. Uh, yeah. Okay. Perfect. Um, and uh, since he's like a spellcaster, he would pretty much have disadvantage on melee. Put mercy on <laughs> down like that. Okay, perfect. Cool, cool, cool. Um, Kellogg is dead. That is Gleam's turn. So Gleam is kind of like inspired by the song. You guys see that they're doing a very intricate, like beautiful, like they're they obviously remember their act. It obviously was full of like magic and things. Um mm -hmm. with within the uh within the um, uh, Witchlight Carnival, and mm -hmm. you see Gleam um, sort of uh, spark jazz hands her, her fingers mm -hmm. in a circle as she uh, holds onto the rope with just her legs, and you guys see a basically an illusion of a moon as it goes through the different phases and it's sort of like sailor moon beams right to Endelin. Um, this will be really bitching if it hit. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, it does not hit, unfortunately. Um, and Endelin just sort of like wildly, eh! and she's still blind. <laughs> and she like whips her head around trying to like see, but she obviously can't. Harper, that is your turn. Uh, so much, okay. Oops, so. It's really yeah. just this guy left, or this guy, this guy. Yeah, let me mark, I'll mark the baddies for you guys. And then uh, Strangelin is invisible. Right? Uh, Sky Skyla is invisible. Okay, so oh, let Skyla me mark- is invisible. Yeah, let me mark the baddies for you guys. I'm just making sure that there's like, no one behind us, but it's fine. Okay. okay. Baddie, baddie number one. Baddie number two. Strongheart good guy. Mm -hmm. And this is other baddie. Then this. Uh, Zorak looks fucked up. And Skyla is invisible, and as far as you guys know, Skyla has not been hit yet, so presumably she's fine. And then this guy? That's Strongheart, so he's on your side. Got it. Okay. 
I'm not moving then. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, like I'm very safe as a wizard over yonder. <laughs> yeah. Definitely would tell him stay frickin' there. Okay, cool. Just magic missile from where I'm at. You. Yeah. Um. I'm going to magic yeah. missile that guy for three. Zerg Zergosh is Zerok. Zerok. Okay, sick. Yeah. All right, uh, a magic missile just hits, right? Baldur's Gate rules. <laughs> It is instantaneous, but uh, I'm only doing this at a first level, so it's only three. Okay, okay. So let me see. Uh, so 1d4 plus one. Okay, so one, three. I get to use my cool new d4. Oh boy. Uh. Five, five. Ooh, all fours! Hell, oh, fuck yeah. so hell 15. yeah! Wow! So fifteen. Harper, describe how your magic missile lights this bitch up and ends his life. This is the guy who had been hunting you <gasps> for months. Ooh. Um, I think I just like. Harper takes a second to look at the surround, like her surroundings. She sees her teammates fighting vigilantly all across parts of this amphitheater. I make eyes with this person who has been, um, no pun intended, on my tail for so <laughs> long. Um, and I scream out. I've had enough of you! And, uh, glittery pink <laughs> bolts of lightning come from my, uh, come from a little bracelet I'm wearing, um, and you just see the three bolts, uh, swiftly, uh, Pin him to the chest. He falls backwards and he dies. Yes. He lays choking on the ground and he bleeds out. Uh, Harper, please roll me a d20. Oh, yeah. Uh, four below. Uh, 19. Okay safely cast the spell with no repercussions um all right you guys see wrinkle run kind of like uh, in his globe of invulnerability uh lindsay that is you uh just remember that globe of invulnerability is concentration got it okay I keep wanting to right-click to move the map. <laughs> right, right. He's right in front of me. So, let's see, what can I do? You don't have to step out of the globe to cast out of it. Okay. Just a heads up. You know what? Let's just. Oh, it's just one chart. Uh, that's okay. Mm. 
Sorry, y'all. I am You're reading good? this. Okay. Um, um, we will just we'll... stick with some magic missiles again. Ye Aimed straight at the dude right in front of me. Um, so... What cloud? How, where is he? I'll just still do it at a first level. So it's just three. Okay. Uh, five. What is it? Plus one. Okay. Five, two... So, 12. Alright, to... Dodge. To Endolin? To this guy. Okay, to Zergosh, okay. Zergosh, yeah. Zergosh, alright. He takes it right into the chest, and you can hear him be like, oh, And, uh, Juniper roars in his face again. <laughs> One second. On my combat uh, It was 12, right? Yes. Okay. Do, do, do. All right, and is that the, is me. The thing that he's in, follow him where he goes. No, it's just right there. So you Got guys it. can okay. technically run into it and like be invulnerable, just a heads up. Okay, and sweet. if any enemies run into it, they're invulnerable as well. well However, that's... Juniper is preventing Zargash from running into it because he would get a pretty nasty opportunity attack. Uh, Meow Wolf, that's your turn. Sweet. Alright, let's see. Uh... <laughs> Alright, let me look at the map first. There I am. And... Um, that, that, that guy that, uh, that, that, uh, Elkhorn missed. Um, what he's was dead. his name? Is he? He's dead. He just, he he just got laid off. Oh, yeah. that's right. He just got blasted in the face. Yeah. Just got blasted in the face. Fantastic. Okay. So, what's the next closest foe? Um, either Endolin or Zargash. Either way, you're probably gonna have to move a bit. Yeah, I'm seeing. Um, can I scooch through in between here and go through down the hallway? Yeah, totally. Let me take a look at. Let me take a look at the. Uh, where's the, the, the ruler? It's gonna be on the uh, right side of the screen. Right. Yeah. There. Um, and then he's going to cast. Ah, yes. Okay. Great. Um, he's going to. And then um, this person here, who is who is um, oh, that strong heart? Okay. Yeah, strong heart. Mercy on. Mercy on, <laughs> like dying on the floor here. Uh, so, yeah. Okay. But that means I can't cast what I can. What I need to cast because <laughs> that might fuck up his body. Uh, the what? And then there's the Celine Neon Twin. Is that, is that on, are they on our side? Yes, the, yep, they're on your side. That's what, that's you guys really only have two Isn't enemies it? left. Got it, got it. Okay. So you guys are doing Sorry. really well, actually. Alright, um, is he like dead dead, or can I like, use healing word? Oh, Mercyon? No, Mercyon's not dead dead, she's just dying on the, she is making death saves. I am gonna cast 
uh, healing word. Wonderful. On, uh, mercy on uh, at a uh, fourth level. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. So. Oh, did I do it? No, that wasn't. That wasn't. Uh, I rolled a d4. That was not correct. Okay, that's right. That was not correct. Okay, healing work. Let me try this again. There it goes. So, uh, 14, 14, uh, healing. Okay, you see Mercy on, like, roll over, and she kind of, like, stands up a little feebly, and she just, like, gives you a thumbs up, and you, and you, like, you feel Elkhorn (laughs) and Molliver, like, audibly relax and, and, like, sigh a little, and Elkhorn, um, uh, uh, calls out to you, is like, thanks, man! <laughs> Let's see here. And then, uh, I think I, uh, let me see if I have a bonus action I can take. Uh, before we finish out. Let's see. Oh, let's see. Um, oh, yeah. Fuck yeah. Um. Is this, uh, okay, so cool. I can cast so if it's at will, does that mean that it could be a bonus action? Yeah, in my opinion. Sweet. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, cast Frostbite on nice. the nearest enemy in front of me. All right. So Endlin um, or Zargash? I, um, uh, let's go with Zargash because Frostbite has 60 feet. Okay, is it an area of effect spell? Uh, no, it has six feet of range, and okay. it's instantaneous. Under okay, sick. A con save of sixteen. Okay, let's see if he makes it. <laughs> he rolled a two. He don't make it. <laughs> the weed. So the target must make a constitution. If failed, it takes one d six cold damage and has disadvantage on the next weapon attack roll. They make before the end of their turn. Okay. Uh, if the spell is increased by 1d6 when you reach level 5, so I am level 5, so it's 2d6. So nice. here we are. Yeah, yeah. We go with 9 damage frostbite. And, and I say, Estas un poco pinche! <laughs> and then <laughs> and the frost is that. Hell yeah. Thing. Just see like this big cold wind and like basically ice shards just uh, just for- like forming around his face and uh, and it just and it yeah so that's that's what you got there. Amazing, uh, Juniper is unperturbed uh, since she is canonically a snowy owl there. All right, Cute. strong heart. That is your turn, Jazzy. Okay. Um, I don't. Okay. Uh, ooh. Okay. Well, he has. I. I'm definitely gonna do his multi attack. He can make three steel attacks. Oh, jeez. Okay. Uh, yeah. Which is. Um. Balling. Okay. Steel. Melee we- weapon attack. Okay, plus six to hit. Uh, okay, I think it's just, he just has this weapon. What does plus six to hit mean? So, you're gonna roll three d20s. <laughs> okay. And then you're gonna add six to each of those rolls. Oh, damn. Let me okay. know who you are trying to hit. Yeah, let me see, hold on, let me see what his weapon is. Um, Endolin is okay, blind, and, uh, uh, Ooh. uh, Stronghard is... Enough? Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure he can just run right up to her. He's yes, probably he the closest is. one. Oh, hell yes, yeah. He is okay. 15 feet. Okay. So, all right. So my boy goes, all right, all right, all right, and runs up to her. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. Uh, okay, now let me roll the 3d20s. One, two, three. Love that we decided that this is just Matthew McConaughey. 
Um, okay, so the first one is seven plus six, twelve. Not great. Oh fuck! They disappeared. Hold on. Can I see my pass rolls? Yes. Let me double check for you. Like um, dissolve. Oh. Really quickly. Seven plus fourteen plus three. 14. Yes. Yes. Thank you. It's pretty bad. Oh, um, okay. So I assume it's each. It's for each one. Right? Okay, so what? yeah, so seven plus six Whoa. is 13, which does okay, not 20. hit Endolin. Um, and then How about 20? Four, 20 does hit Endolin, and then unfortunately, um, <laughs> three does nine not hit. Does not, yeah, nine does not hit. Okay, so you hit her once, That's okay. Um, okay. and then you are going to roll. Um, 1d8. And then automatically add four. Okay. I am not rolling um, using my hands because you know what? I don't trust myself. There's something that's important. Uh, okay, roll the one. Sick. Um, plus four. Five. Okay. So she takes five damage. <sighs> and um, so he just yells, all right, all right, all right. And <laughs> stabs her, kind of goes, swings once, misses. Swings again, slashes, and a bunch of black goo comes out, and then goes for a third time to charm, but also misses again. <laughs> uh, he is really, um, he's more concerned about looking cool than, uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> than actually yep. hitting her. Um, Absolutely, I agree. And I mean, like, he does look really cool, but <laughs> not the point, Strawheart. All right, that is Molly Burr's turn? Um, and she is going to dash right up to Mercyon. Um, and as she dashes by, you guys see a, a Skyla reappear again and try and shank uh, a Molly Ver. As she had, uh, she is able to Move and teleport. Okay, let's see what she gets a... I guess she bops her rather than a shank. Oh, dear. That's a net 20 on Miss Oliver. <laughs> Fuck. Okay. Uh, so that is going to be... Uh, okay, well, it's only 2d6. Okay, so she only takes 6 damage from that crit, which is not too bad. Um, and you hear, uh, Skyla, like, making fun of her, and she's like, Oh, you're running to your girlfriend? And Molly Bird just, like, spits on her and, like, keeps running. <laughs> mm-hmm. And she gets up and just fully, like, starts hugging Mercy on and shoots, like, a nasty, nasty glare at Skyla. Um, that is Mercy on's turn. And Mercy on is going to, uh, cure wounds herself. <laughs> um. Which is Oh boy, does it not boy. tell me. Da, 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 da. Okay, yeah, it's two D eight, let's say. Okay, she gets another six points of healing from that, so she looks a little a little healthier. Um, and she can do something else. Okay, interesting. Um, you see her turn to Endolin and just like uh 
hold out her hands and you guys see like a little different than the than the moonbeam that Gleam casts, but more of like a divine aura starts to fill her up. And she uh says something that you guys don't really understand, um, and a beam of holy light hits Endlin, um, or attempts to hit Endlin, I should say. It definitely does. Uh, okay, so then she's gonna take 3d8. Mm, okay, so that's not too bad. And uh, Endelin again screams out in pain. She really does not know what the fuck is going on because she's been blind this whole time. Oh, she's time. blind? She's still blind. <laughs> Good. Okay, uh, that is Sargash's turn. Okay, he sees that uh, Ringle Run is, um, is uh, uh, in the Globe of Invulnerability. He would get disadvantage on hitting, um... On hitting, uh... Juniper, but... You see his staff glows with a horrible green energy. And, um... You see, uh, Zorak begins to float, and apparently is huge. Uh, and Zorak unnaturally, uh, rises from the dead. As Zorgosh animates his corpse. Cool. Um, and then... Do, 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 no, do. not cool. Not... Don't glaze over that like that was cool. <laughs> That's not cool. <laughs> I like Loki, it's kind of cool. <laughs> uh, Harper's like, that wasn't cool, but it is cool, like, from a, you know, a wizard standpoint. You would never, of course, but, uh... Okay, let's see. Do do do. It doesn't say he gets multi attack, so I think that's all he can do. All right, Keeks's turn. Oh wait, sorry. And the zombie goes right after him. My bad, my bad. But Keeks, you're on deck. Uh, do do do. So, uh, Zorak zombie is uh is going to slam himself into Elkhorn. Uh, that is a 12 to hit, which I don't think hits, uh, Elkhorn. It does not. Elkhorn's AC is really high. And that's it. He just, he's just like, Arr! and just slams the Elkhorn. Elkhorn's like, get the fuck out of here, dude. And just jumps him back. Uh, Keeks, that is officially your turn. Emma, you are muted. Thank you. I was totally talking. <laughs> <laughs> Like, all right, this is what's gonna happen. <laughs> We're like, damn, no one's reacting. <laughs> all right. So, uh, Keeks is, um, so there's no enemies directly in front of Keeks that would provoke a, a, a attack of opportunity, right? Correct. He can wail on Zergash if he wants to. Uh, Keeks is, man, uh, Keeks is gonna fly up, uh, from one side of the stage to the very back right here. And as he flies by, he goes, you zombie, the job! And then he perches himself up right over here. Okay! Far, far away. <laughs> You're like, Keeks yeah. is GTFOing. Okay, no problem. All right, that is Endolin's turn. Um, let me look at Blinded really quick. 
Um, because I just believe it gives her disadvantage. <laughs> oh, attack rolls against them have advantage, and they have disadvantage. Okay, just so you guys know, you have advantage on Endolin right now. Um, she can save at the end of her turn. Um... Okay, so she's going to try... And... Polymorph... Strong Heart. Which is a wisdom save. Um, let's see if he gets anything to this. Okay, uh, Jasmine, he gets a plus three to this wisdom save. So go ahead and uh, uh, roll with advantage. So roll the d20 twice and add okay. a plus three. Oh, good. Take the higher number. I'm rolling my two d20. Oh boy. Hold on, let me make sure that they're d20. Yeah, there. Sorry, guys. Okay. <laughs> no, it's probably that is a good thing to check. Ooh. Okay. Um, I rolled a five and a nineteen. Okay. So hey! nineteen plus 19 saves. three, twenty-two. Woohoo! Yeah, that that saves like a motherfucker. So, um, he does not polymorph. And Edlin just like screams into the night, and as she screams, she's gonna try and make this save. Let me double check to see what this says. DC 13 wisdom save. Okay, she gets a plus three to this. Okay, so she can see now. So now no. she, yeah, so she, you guys see the sort of, she shakes her head and she uh, looks at Strongheart and just does the, the eye thing. And she goes, I'll uh -oh. get you, my pretty. Oh no, I'm so close. <laughs> okay. And um, that is Zindi's turn. Hell yeah. Okay. Um, I want to make sure that my um, uh, my little my little tune on the flute gave um, the twins uh, some bardic inspiration. So I'm gonna um, just put that out there. Uh, give them Roll bardic inspiration. For... Oh, okay. You give them bardic. Yeah, from the the song that I perfect. I, and that's is that a D8? noodle? Um, yeah, it's a D8. The um, ability attack or saving throw. Cool. And Perfect. then, um, who, who? Okay, this evil looking wizard with the horn near us. Yes. Yeah, oh no, there's still this guy, like, there's still this guy right in, oh my god, there's still this dude right in front of us. Okay. Uh, ooh. Mm. He's a zombie now, so he's a little he's less, a okay. you know, dubious. Uh, I. And uh, what? he would disanimate if uh, Zargash went down. Okay. Zargash is still alive. Okay. Um, let me see. I am going... <laughs> Sorry, I'm laughing at the idea of using something else. I'm not going to use that. Um... <laughs> oh. oh, let me see what my... Um... Sorry. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I have polymorph. I totally forgot to use that at the beginning. That did work very uh, well on War on uh, Warduke. Okay, I'm gonna try and cast um, polymorph um, at um, at whatever this at Skyla. Okay. Um, Perfect. Do I have to roll anything? Uh, I believe you do, or I think I have to roll something. Do do do. Okay. do. Oh no, that's sleep. 
What level Does is this scroll is contains your... a fourth level spell? Um. Uh, oh, uh, you, did did you polymorph or did did Zindi polymorph before? Uh, I didn't. I, I, poly, I polymorphed. You polymorphed War Duke. Okay, so just so yeah. you know, this 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 consumes. At one time. Yeah, yeah, okay. yes, yes. This consumes so this is the, the time spell. to use it. Okay, this is the so, time to use it. Uh, so it's a it's a DC fifteen. Um, yeah. Okay. Okay. We have to roll. They rolled a nineteen. Skyla does not change, and the polymorph spell wow. disappears in your no! in your hands. What? Uh, Zindi yells. Oh, bad luck. Darn. Pretty, pretty low odds, and yet she did it, so. Damn. All right. Okay. Well, I guess that's my turn. All right. Snoodles! <laughs> All right. Fight somebody, Snoodles! Fight <laughs> somebody, <laughs> and deals. Uh, uh, Snoodles has, is it? I believe it's 20 on land. Noodles goes to take a chunk out of the fresh zombie. Oh, okay. Snoodles, that's nasty, but just just to <laughs> his taste. So, um, well, you know. He's fresh. He just got reanimated. He hasn't started decomposing yet. That's fair. That's fair. He's protein. Like, He's like, I gotta get my gains like, on. <laughs> uh-huh. I'm so warm, you know? Yeah. Alright. So, let's so he goes to he goes to buy. Okay, he does a little loop de loop. Or I guess he can go like right there, yeah. Yeah. He's going for that. He's chomp chomp. Precision bite. Is he flanked? He's flanked, right? He is flanked. So you have a vantage. All right. Let me do. We have a uh, 16 and a 12. Both hit. All right. So uh, yeah, he took he takes a bite out of him. Uh, what 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 do I roll for damage for his bite? Um, let me doubly doubly check. It is a 1d10 plus two. So this would be 2d10 plus 4, essentially. Oh, 2d10 plus 4. Yeah. For both attacks. Ah, that's right, because they both hit. <laughs> Do I have to roll again, then, because one was with advantage? That was the roll with advantage, because he's flanked. Right, but you, yeah, so you hit, you hit both times, and then you just roll your damage. How do you clear the number when you have them? Keep on pressing it, and it just keeps on giving me more numbers. Oh, How do you um, clear? gee. Oh, oh I, I did it. I did okay, it. cool. Ah. I was like, I feel like we have this problem before. <laughs> All right. So the first uh, D10, I rolled a five. And then okay, the and that's D10, plus plus two. So yeah, uh, seven. Okay. One, uh, eight plus two, so ten. So after after having made some space out of getting rid of his gaseousness, <laughs> he, he's made some space and he goes in for the bite and double chomps. He fully <laughs> takes off one of Zorak's arms and oh. one of Zorak's legs, and you just see Snoodles yum 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 yum, and it's really gross. Like the bone crunch is really sickening. And, uh, and, uh, I imagine Meow Wolf is like every dog owner ever when their dog randomly finds a chicken bone in the bush and they're just like, stop eating that. (laughs) (laughs) Snoodles looks extremely proud of himself. (laughs) All right, that is 
blister. She's gonna go for the sun ray again. They are still doing their act. Um, much to Endolin seems unamused at this. Okay. Plus five. Damn, I think that just misses. It does. Okay. Uh, just misses. Although... Uh, yeah, just misses. Do, do, do. Alright, so that is... Her... Attack. Hold okay. on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yes. Oh, well, I suppose she has a bardic inspiration, right? Yes, she does! That too. 1d8. Oh. That hits! Okay! Yay! Yay! Alright, so, Endolin takes some more damage. Okay, so 2d8. Seven. Okay, so she takes another ten damage, and she has to make the wisdom saving throw, or she will be blinded again. Oh, okay. You see, she once again yells in in uh, displeasure, and she goes, "Oh, not again!" Um, and like her eyes like cloud over. So now you guys have advantage on attacks for Endolin until the oh, yeah. end of her next turn. That is Skyla's turn. All right, so Skyla is now um pretty close to you guys. Mm -hmm. All right, so she is going to let's see. She's just straight up gonna come over to, well, I guess Meow Wolf. <laughs> Sorry, Meow Wolf. Um, and you just see her and you think she's gonna like make a kind of spell attack and she just cracks you over the head. <laughs> she makes an Eldritch Staff Ow. attack. <laughs> okay, so first one, she bops you for 12. Does that hit? I don't think it does. Let's see, let me take a look at my armor. Nope, armor class 13. First it, one. It's, it is now a game of whack-a-mole. Uh, does 16 hit? 16 hits. Okay, so the first one crack her staff on the ground, and the second one does find your noggin. You guys hear a fairly sickening crunch, and... Uh, <laughs> Meow yeah, well, if you oh. see, you see you definitely see some like fireflies you're like ooh okay and that is going to be um only 1d6 uh she rolls a 6 um so you're going to take 6 damage and two lightning damage as the Eldritch Staff, like, lights you up. All right. That is Elkhorn's turn. Ah, un sape para un sapo. All right, um, what does Elkhorn do? Okay. Elkhorn is right here. He runs. Uh, she sees that Meow Wolf gets conked on the head. And he goes... Not the one true king! <laughs> 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 okay, uh, Elkor, make a deck saving throw for me to... avoid being hit by the zombie. Normally it would be an opportunity attack, but since he is in fact a zombie, he's just like... Ugh. <laughs> he has no arms. He has, he has one arm. He's one just like, eh. <laughs> and one leg. Wait, he's on one leg. He hasn't he fallen over yet. That's fair. 
<laughs> okay, uh, yeah, it's, what's the deck save, Elkhorn? <laughs> Let's get that deck save. Okay, so I'm gonna roll it. You get a plus one to this. Okay. 1d20. And he rolls a nine. Okay. Okay, yeah. You he easily just like hops over the arm as the zombie's like <laughs> and the Elkhorn rushes to Meow Wolf. And uh he he goes for the um the double long sword attack to try to hit. Um, let's see here. Does he have any plus he has plus three, right? Plus three to the, the uh, he has plus two to the long sword or plus three to the dagger. Oh, uh, he's plus two to the long sword. So he rolls a five for the first hit. Doesn't hit. And uh, and he rolls a six plus two. He rolls an eight to Damn. hit again. Elcorn doesn't miss her, and you just hear Skyla like mocking him, and she's like. Oh, Elkhorn, it's so sweet you came back to see Molly Rare Mercy on reunited. I know you love her. And Elkhorn is still crying. <laughs> He's having a really emotional day. <laughs> what a butthead. I'm so mean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're the League of Malevolence for a reason. All right, that is Juniper's turn. Oh yeah, okay. Juniper is now going to um, bite and a swat with a multi attack at this guy. Or Let's there is go. a oh, is it, uh, why does he? Oh, oops, sorry, one meter. Why does he have this? Um, this what is this square around him? Is oh, it, that's just a mark ball? that he is a bad guy. Oh, okay. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Um, okay. Do I have to? Do I have to roll two twice to um? Yes, for okay. Juniper, she is going to have a, a plus five for the beak and plus seven to the claw. Okay. Um, so just two, two d20s, right? Yep, two d20s. You add five to one and a seven to the other. I didn't know I got what? plus five. Okay. With my rolling actual dice luck. Oh, okay! Yeah, it's coming through. I was rolling them so badly. I got a 17 and a 19. Nice. Okay, plus 7 and plus 5. Okay, let's do plus 7 to 19. So 26. Let's do that. Tomp. And then plus 5, 23 for swipe. Perfect. Okay. Oh, so they both hit. So you're gonna roll, uh, you're gonna roll a 1d10 yeah. uh, for the beak. And then add 5 to it. Whatever you get. Sorry, let me find the 10. A d10 for the beak, plus five? Yep, just automatically to whatever oh. you roll. Okay, okay. Oh. Oh, this is the 10, okay. So. The rare and elusive d10. That was not a 10. Sorry, because I, I somehow rolled an 11. <laughs> okay, five. <laughs> <laughs> Ultra critical hit. Uh, ten. <laughs> ten? Okay. Yeah. So okay. Fifteen, and then the so other fifteen one on is... the beak. Okay. Amazing. No, no, no. I, I originally, I originally rolled a five, so so ten total. Got it. Um, so ten on the beak, and then it's a D eight for um, or D four for this white. Yes. Let me double check. Uh, yeah, two D eight plus five. Woo! Two D eight plus five damage. Okay. Three. One. Okay. Four plus five. Nine. Um, so total nine. Dragash looks fucked up. He's Hell like yeah. he, had, he like Juniper's just like. He is, and she's eating the chomp of flesh that she's bitten from his uh, from his arm. And he screams in pain and like holds his shoulder that now is like mostly gone. And uh, he like has to take a knee because he's so fucked up. All right. 
That oh, okay. is... Okay, Kellogg's dead. All right, top of the round again. All right, so that is our uh, our girl Gleam. She is going to once again try this moon ray, and you guys see from the power of the moon. Oh my God, Gleam, come on, baby girl. She rolled a two. <laughs> she doesn't get Wait. Oh, yeah, what's up, Harper? What you trying to do? Ben, ben luck. <laughs> Amazing. Okay, so I get to re-roll, right? Let me look at it one more time. Uh... So this is my reaction. I'm spending two sorcery points. Uh... I roll a 1d4 and apply the number rolled as a bonus... Uh... to you. Well, would you roll? She rolled a two! I don't think it's gonna work. I don't Hold think. On. Do you have uh? Is it tides of fate that allows them to reroll? I have tides of chaos. Tides of uh... chaos. That's what I'm saying. You can gain advantage on one attack roll, ability check, or saving throw before you regain use of this feature. The DM can have you roll the wild magic surge on the table after you cast a first level spell or higher. Let's put this in the chat. Okay, but I think this is something that you have to be doing, right? Yeah. Okay. Womp, womp. Okay. Um, well, it is your turn, Harper. Well. well. <laughs> You're like, good try, Gleam. Gleam just looks really <laughs> disappointed, but uh. she is supportive of, of her twin, <laughs> who seems to be getting all the hits in. <laughs> Just checking to see if there's there's literally nothing else I can. Okay, cool. Okay. Um. Right here. Cool, cool. I'm moving here. So I'm like behind Meow Wolf. Okay. Um. Not like right behind, but. In the vicinity of. Yeah. Okay. Uh. Where is that from here? Okay, cool. From here, here, I'm going to use my new crossbow. Ayo. Uh. At Endlin. You have advantage because she is blind. Love that. This has just been the week of new dice. Our mystery packs just came in. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah, you I said know. you were gonna post them and you did it. <laughs> it we literally <laughs> just opened them. Okay. I'll send them I'll send them after. Okay, okay. so let me see. Uh how many it's just it's just one arrow, right? Or yeah. Uh, two hundred. Okay. So. Uh, Twenty-four to hit. That fucking hits. Yeah. Yay. Yeah. <clears throat> One d eight plus two. Damn. Four. Okay, hey. You guys are kind of you guys are whittling her down. Yeah. You um, hear her. Hey! Hey! <laughs> <laughs> um Is there anything else I want to do? You got a bonus action? I have to touch. Yeah, I have to touch. Never mind. Well, that is the end of my turn. Alright, it is Ring of Run's turn. So, still your turn. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, end of Harper's turn. Meow Wolf, um, you are on deck. Alright, let's see here. Oh. Okay. Is that zombie still intact, or what? what's the deal? Yes, he is. Uh, on deck means next up after... 
after Lizzie takes her next turn. Okay, it'll hit no matter what. Cool, cool. Um, Ringle Run is going to Freezing Ray, the dude right in front of him. Nice. Is that... Yeah, that's gonna hit. Uh, that's not that's with not... advantage for him, right? It's just a straight Yeah, roll. just straight roll. Uh... uh... 23 to hit? That hits. <laughs> Yay! He is looking so bad. Wow! 6d8. One. <laughs> okay. Uh, two. Three. Hold on. Hold on. I need more dice. Oh, okay. I mean, <laughs> what, what have you rolled? <laughs> Four. Okay, I just I have four. So let me see. I'll roll it twice. Uh, I don't add anything because it's just six. so three, nine, ten, seventeen. Describe how you ice this motherfucker. Uh, Forty-five damage. Oh yeah, he, he just dead as hell. Even if he had taken no damage, that was his. That was how many hit points he had. So he is so dead. Yay! Woo. Um. Oh. I think Ringle Run just sort of like straightens his robes and is like, "All right, we're done with that one. Cool, cool. Let's move on to the next." And he makes yeah. eyes for what's her face. Yes. Yeah. Right around, just like, ah, oh, yes, all in a good day's work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so pleased with this little wizard self. Uh, okay, um, fabulous. He's gonna stay put, yeah. Yeah, in his little globe of it. He is like the happiest little wizard in his globe. Um, and he hasn't <laughs> been hit, so he, the concentration's up. All right, right. Yeah, wolf. <laughs> That is your turn. All that is left is a fucked up zombie and um, Endolin herself. Okay. Alright. You hear Endolin call out. She's like, Ugh. League? League? Uh, Skyla? <laughs> oh, I guess Skyla's still up. <laughs> She still hasn't been fucking hit. I, um... This whole time? Oh my god, okay. This yeah, she's been good. Time. She's got good luck. Alright, I'm going to cast... Moonbeam. Ooh! Ooh. At, at a, um... At a fourth level. Oh, yeah. And, um... Yeah. And I, um, I, uh, cast it, um, on Endolin, uh, like, right over Endolin. That's so, amazing. Uh, mm -hmm. And, and I, um, I said, I'm, I'd show you my ass, but I'd move, I'm gonna boonbeam you first. Ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> amazing. <laughs> Not allowed to be that funny. <sighs> and, uh. So, <laughs> like, so happen. So she has to save for a sixteen. Okay, so she just rolls a sixteen. She rolled. Um, I mean that she doesn't. It's not a specific save. It's just a sixteen, right? Yeah, it's a, okay. it's a con save. Oh, con save. Okay, got it. Got it. Okay, let's see what she gets to this. Damn, she gets a plus eight to constitution. Fuck. Okay, yeah, so she rolled a 24. Um, does she take half on a save? Um, it's, yeah, half as much damage as a successful one. Okay, and, cool, uh, cool. And let's see here, and it's cast at a third level, which I cast it at a fourth. Okay. 
uh, the damage increases 1d10 for uh, each slot level above 2. God damn. So I okay. cast it. So, okay, so it's still 2d10 because it would have been 4d10 damage if she hadn't. Saved. Well, yeah, so you roll, yeah. you roll the 4d10 and then you just half it. Okay. So, d10. One, two, three, four, and, and tw uh, 12, uh, 12 damage. Okay, nice, nice. All right. Uh, that is strong. Oh, I get, I get, oh, oh yeah, go I get, ahead. I, I, I have an extra, I have an extra action. Um, okay, like fantastic. Cast. Yeah, and I'm going to, uh, cast... Um, uh, is there someone that is who's who's next to me? Uh, uh, Skyla. How, Skyla's next to me. Yeah. Is that is that the this this beast? Yeah. That's the enemy. Yeah. That's, that's the enemy. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So I I um I reach over and uh, my you see my hand glow as I reach over and touch Elkhorn and I cast guidance. Nice. Uh, on Elkhorn. Which uh, gives him the ability uh, to... Uh, he gets a D plus D4 to uh, a target roll. Or an ability or an ability check of choice. Okay. Nice. Then that's the end of it. All right. Strongheart. Jazzy, that is your turn. Okay. The zombie is still alive in front of me? Uh, well, he's up He's up in front of Endolin, actually. Oh. What's this... What's this dude right in front of me, then? The bitch by, by me and Noodle. Oh, uh, Zorak. Yeah, that is the zombie. He's fucking oh, okay. Looking. But uh, yeah, yeah, it's not Zindy's, Zindy's turn for a while. Uh, oh, just... oh, oh, other, other, sorry. Okay, other character. Your other character that you're playing. Strongheart. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, Strongheart is gonna give uh, his multi-attack another shot. Um, uh, <laughs> he's feeling valiant and, uh, in, uh... He flexes. Yeah, he does, and he goes, all right, all right, all right. Uh, <laughs> As he swings okay. each time. So, do I, sorry, I need to roll... Eat three d twenty. Three d twenties, and you're gonna add plus six to each of those rolls. Okay. Ooh, I'm rolling real bad. Okay. Okay, I got a ten, a fifteen, and a nat twenty. Ooh. So, okay. 15, so. Hell yeah. Twenty one and twenty six. The 21 and the 26 uh, hit. So what you're gonna do yeah. is you're gonna roll um, 1d8 and okay. then 2d8. So th you're gonna roll 3d8 and then we're gonna add 12 on whatever comes with that. Okay, and I should add them all together? Yeah. Okay. And I can first D8. plug in the, the math. Okay, first d8, six. Nice. Second D8. Six. Okay, I'm sorry. Nice. Guys, so I'll hold better. <laughs> One. Okay. Okay. So, so 13 plus. 25 damage. Oh, bitch. Okay, so Strongheart, he, um, he didn't do too well last time, but all of this fighting for justice is, has, uh, ignited a fire within him he uh <laughs> yes he's feeling valorant his uh righteous sword is humming underneath his fingers and he slashes once <laughs> he slashes twice at the handle and he slashes one more oh he slashes one more time Right. The second one didn't hit, but the first one <laughs> did. Amazing. Well, okay. Actually, you have advantage, so roll that first one one more time. 
Oh, the first one. The first one that didn't hit, yeah. Oh, the one, oh, the d20. Yeah. <gasps> oh, with advantage, okay. Okay, six. Okay. No. <laughs> uh, he is looking very valiant, though. Yes. All right. Molly Ver is going to scooch on up. She jumps onto the stage next to Endelin, and she's like, You fucking bitch took my fiance. I'll kill you. Um, <laughs> okay, she is going to take her short sword and uh, attack. <sighs> that's a 16, so that just misses. Nat 20, that's a critical. Perfect. Um, okay, so she gets... Oh, yes, perfect. And she gets sneak attack because she has advantage. Okay. So, that is... 2d6. Plus another 2d6. Okay. Alright... 11, 12. Oh. Ooh. Endelin looks trashed right now. She is not looking good. Uh, Mercy on. Uh, well, then make a multi attack. Uh, she is going to also jump up on the stage. And she gets advantage. So she gets... You guys see her kind of, like, light up her, her body again. A sort of divine energy to her. She, she hits on that one. Fourteen damage. Endelin is like screaming in pain at as the divine light touches her, and then oh shit! And then you see uh, Mercy on take out her quarter staff, and she just swings, and you guys hear like almost like wood breaking. Um, and Mercy on just rolled a critical on Endelin, so that is, uh, 2d6. Oh. You guys see you guys. as, as Mercy on just beats the absolute shit out of Endelin. Endelin, like, Endelin crumbles, crumbles in on herself, and she's like, no. And the yeah. twins uh, finish their act, and you see that one. Uh, you guys see over the stage a illusion of an eclipse happen, and sort of like uh, eclipses the form of Endelin in the moonbeam that uh, Meow Wolf cast, and Endelin literally dissolves into herself. Oh my god. Um, wow. And, uh, and you hear Mercy on kind of, like, cry out in surprise, and you guys hear, uh, a click, and Skyla disappears again. Oh. Um, you guys are out of initiative. Oh. Um, and Endelin is defeated. Um, wow. You guys go ahead and what would you like to do? Uh, Zindi turns to Harper and Meow Wolf and goes, Did we do it? And yells at Gleam. <laughs> did we do it? Uh, we, we did it! Oh my gosh! And she like does like a twirl into uh, Glister's arms and just just like hugging her sister Molliver like picks up and like spins mercy on around uh uh elkhorn like high fives 
uh, Meow Wolf and Snoodles is like, yum, 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 as he's like eating the rest of the zombie. Oh my god. <laughs> Hell yeah. Uh, is anyone still hurt? Everyone looks kind of okay. Great. Wow. Uh, job well done. Uh, I think uh, Harper just begins to weep. I, I, I go to look out a window to see if the climate's changed. Ah. As you look out the window, you see it's finally stopped raining. The there is no more thunder and lightning crashing outside and you see just as the clouds are breaking up a full moon appearing well so what now did we did we save the thing is that it? No. I don't. I'm not. I'm not sure. Did the rain stop at least? Yes, it did. Uh, it looks nice. Looks nice out, like the other times. Uh, go ahead and make uh, an investigation. You check, you guys. Okay. Oh. I can roll for that. Uh. Uh, I, 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 uh, one. <laughs> you got a one? Critical one. Uh, you are, you're kind of just like looking out the window and Keeks like lands on your shoulder and he's like, eh, we did it. Nice. Um, you, mean, <laughs> <laughs> you mean we did it. You just flew around a little bit. Um, 10 plus 6, 16. What okay. is it again? Uh, investigation. Uh, 18. Uh, oh. Zindi and Harper, you guys start kind of like looking around the theater, and everyone is sort of like. Valor's call nope. is 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 kind of celebrating with each other. You see Ringle Run uh, come over and like clap clap his son on the shoulder, and he's like, yeah, you did good, kid. And, uh, uh, Harper, you kind of, like, you don't see anything in the theater that you think would would kind of point to getting Zybilda back, and you guys both simultaneously approach uh, Endolin's body. Um, you see that she's kind of, like, fallen in herself, and it's just, like, a lot of, like, black, uh, uh, like clothing and such and um you guys start to rifle through her remains and as you sort of like sweep the black cloak off underneath uh Endolin's visage is a a cracked cauldron <gasps> there it is I very gently, almost cautiously, remove it from the body and just in awe hold it in my hands. It's like, it's a, it's, it's, it's sort of like a, a portable cauldron. It's not, uh, it's not like her standing cauldron. Um, it, 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 it's, it's, uh, made of, like, a pewter, almost. Mm. And it has a very large crack down the center of it. Um. I, uh, let's see. Uh, I think I look out and I'm like, does anyone know mending? <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what I'm looking for. I'm like, uh, uh, no, but oh. I can make you a giant insect. 
Let's How about see. a wall of thorns? <laughs> uh, I can dispel the magic from it. No! No! <laughs> no. What do you want to do with the magic inside the cauldron, Harper? I'm hoping that... I'm hoping that this brings my queen back. Oh, of course. What's the best way? Is there like you do you have like a spell or something you can uh or do you need a song? You know it's been fifteen long agonizing years. I've always dreamed of this day to finally happen, and I'm so honored and thrilled that I can have my companions here by my side. May I roll a history check to see if I can remember the way to possibly yes. get Yes, please roll with advantage. It is a 19. Harper, you begin to quietly hum a tune. You remember that Zybilna would uh, occasionally make uh, a little inconsequential potions. She would sing this song. Mm. And she stirred the cauldron. Cute. Um, I look up at Zindi and I say, In fact, there is a song. Um, oh, diggity dog. <laughs> and I give Zindi the lyrics. <laughs> Um, Cindy, uh, takes out her lute and starts noodling and sings eight cats, eight cats perch atop, eight dead attending, eight lizards flee from eight cats scavenging. Um, Cindy then kind of looks awkwardly at Meow Wolf and <clears throat> reads the next, <laughs> sings the next line. <laughs> <laughs> Eight toads climbing, meet eight dead and falling, <laughs> and then <laughs> shrug, <laughs> and then kind of just he kind of gestures with their eyes like I'm sorry, it's the lyric. <laughs> uh, eight snakes sneak under eight, <clears throat> and then looks at Keeks. Uh, eight bats screaming, eight eyes <laughs> open, <laughs> always dreaming. All on the cauldron that is ever seeming. Um, and then ends with a flourish. Um, kind of loop solo that goes on a little bit too long. Um, <laughs> Jethro Tull style. Yeah. Uh, you see that everyone has kind of gathered around, waiting anxiously for this magic to occur. And... For a moment, nothing really happens. And then, slowly, the pewter cauldron begins to change. It starts to gleam and glow. And from the bottom, it begins to gain a golden aura. And it seeps upwards all the way to the top. You see the crack slowly begin to mend itself as the cauldron turns gold and a bright purple liquid begins to churn in a whirlpool in the center. That thing, uh, that thing came back to life, didn't it? My queen? My queen, can you hear me? Is it you? Hello? 
the cauldron bubbles expectedly. I... I take out Snickersnack. Okay. And... Uh... I have me and Snickersnack kind of tilt forward and peek in. <laughs> As you guys look in, you see and hear a calliope softly play in the background. And you see the doll of Tasha in her dark green robes as you lean over, you see the eyes flick to you, and just the smallest twitch of her puppet hand. Try to reach in and grab it. You hesitate for a second. And you feel Snickersnack sort of nudge your shoulder. And you reach your paw in. And you feel... Not a wooden puppet hand. But a warm hand. Clutch yours. And you pull with all your might. And you pull out a woman. She is tall mm -hmm. with what? long brown hair and what a, a very <laughs> elaborate crown with dark purple and maroon robes. And she almost seems to float out of the cauldron. Um, even though Harper is, uh, almost knocked back by the force <laughs> of pulling her out. And she looks around for a minute, and her eyes alight on Harper. And she smiles. And, uh, takes your hand again and says, I knew you could do it. I'm so grateful. Thank you. My queen, oh. my queen, it's been so long. Oh, the gods. Oh my gosh. It's it has, so good to see you. It has been very long. I'm so happy oh. to see you. I give her a big, huge hug. She is not normally the most affectionate, but <laughs> uh, in this moment, she warmly embraces you, and you know that everything will be okay. As she releases you. She looks at everyone before her. She goes, well... I do believe few things are in order. And you, and she claps her hands. And you guys uh, kind of through the windows uh, or the, the dome of Mother Horn, you see that the clouds part and the moon shines beautifully through and you can see the stars in the Feywild for the first time since you've been here. Now, Zindi, I know I hadn't quite perfected that wish spell when we uh, parted ways, but I think I have it now. She sort of like turns to the cauldron says a few incantations over it. 
you see the colors change periodically. Oh, um, Zindi uh, immediately bows and um, is just honored that the queen has remembered their name. Um, my queen, it is wonderful to have you back. It is wonderful to be back. I'm very grateful. Thank you. What uh, can I grant you? Oh, man. Um, Zindi is, uh, thinks about the kind of, like, life that they didn't get to lead at the Witchlight Carnival that they had, you know, traveled so far to try and kind of experience. But then they also think about the kind of new happiness that they found with their new brother and seeing their mom in a happy way and how they had promised to stop by and see them. But Cindy really does not want to spend more time in the day. Um, oh, my queen, I think I would like to return back to the plane that we I came from, where the Witchlight Carnival is, and actually give it a shot at being a traveling musician. Maybe see our old friend Clarga again? But I would also... I wish I didn't have to say complete the complete goodbye to my family and and Will and what's his name, right? My brother. Yes. yes. Okay. Willoughby. Will <laughs> Willoughby. Yeah, Willoughby. That's what I thought. I was like Willoughby, Willoughby, and my mother and her new husband. I must think if you if you would allow me to. Well. I have excellent news for you. Cindy. I can return you to the material plane. And as you know, the Witchlight Carnival does hold a passage to Prismere, which is now open, as it always should have been. You can come and go as you please. <gasps> My queen, really? That is, that's, that's amazing. Oh, guys, and then you guys could come visit. I don't, I don't know. Harper, you have never seen the carnival. And I don't know, Meow Wolf, I don't know if you're going to keep hanging around here or going to, uh, or, oh man, I'm so happy. Um, Zindi bows again deeply. Um, I will then, um, maybe after, not immediately, uh, I won't immediately jump into the into the into the cauldron portal just yet. I would like to maybe get a little bit of time with my friends first, um, but then oh, I will say a goodbye for now before I return to the Witchlight Carnival. Of course, she turns her attention to Meow Wolf. She smiles and. Uh, she winks at you, Meow Wolf. And she goes, Ah, and my lord. And Meow Wolf, you get the distinct sense that this is the only person in the Feywild who does not, is not compelled to call you as such. But chooses uh -huh. to do so anyway. <laughs> what can I grant you? You are muted. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm speechless. And like, you are muted. <laughs> All right, here we go. Um, so uh, Meow Wolf is, is torn as to what to ask. Doesn't really know um, because, you know, it was like 
a rogue letter that compelled him to, you know, go to the carnival and then got him into this situation in the first place. And he's never really figured out uh, why uh, he's being addressed as such. Um, and and uh, I, I, I ask, um, I don't know, I, I, you know, I ask for, to hold, to hold, <laughs> to hold a favor for me. And, and uh, when I call upon it in in the future. Ah, yes, I believe they call you this, and I owe you in the material realm. I suppose this can be arranged. Thank you. Uh, that's that's very magnificent. Do you wish to remain here? Uh, um, I mean, I. I, 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 could I? Can I go? I, I, I don't know. Maybe I can. I need to go freely too. I, I have no idea. What, uh, this book. This book uh, has been messing with me. The puppet show. What does it all mean? Why uh, are people addressing me as royalty? Yeah, we definitely have some questions. I mean, sorry, my lord, but. I mean, we know that, of course, he was the witch-like monarch, but it can't all be it, can it, my queen? She smiles. She goes, I have seen many witch-like monarchs, but none were successful in finding Prismere. I imagine this is a little joke that the hags use to, uh, shall we say, spot one of these adventurers when they came through. <coughs> uh, so it's, it's, it's so it's a practical joke, like me learning to be a druid. Got it. Ah. <laughs> uh, she it. turns to Gleam and she uh, gestures for uh, Gleam the, the book, and she goes, Ah, yes, let me take a look at this book here. She thumbs the pages slowly, and she goes, mm, Yes, the Frog Prince, I am familiar. She shuts it. She goes, Now, my, my adopted sisters sort of uh, thought themselves, well, they used to call themselves the Fates, or the Hourglass Coven. Uh, each of them took one of either the past, the present, or the future. <laughs> they were the ones squabbling about who should rule Prismir. And it does say here, my liege, that you have the propensity to rule Prismere. What? You are always destined to be a king in your own right. Uh, I, I mean, I, I was but a, but a spawn in a pond. <laughs> It doesn't matter where you are from. You possess kindness and love for those around you. You chose empathy and niceness at every turn. You could be a true leader within Prismere. I hear that the, uh, well, the soggy court is looking for a new ruler. Oh. Oh. My lord. I mean, you have the, the robes and everything. I I, I mean if, if 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 the if the if the people want me, I I uh I will not I will not turn away such a responsibility. But uh if uh, the people don't want me, uh, I, I might want to go back to the Wishlight Carnival as well. So I guess, I guess. 
My what lord, you, you must, you must become the king you were destined to be. Are you kidding me? You've led us this whole way. And just think of the good you could do for all of those frogs. They never had a frog king. Well, when you, when you put I, it like that. I guess they've had frog king consorts, but you know, that's not the same. <laughs> right, right. Ah, uh, well, uh, uh, I, I suppose, uh, I suppose if I, I I don't like it, I could I could renounce my my kingly hood, and I turn and I turn to uh, Zavilna, and I'm like, uh, if if I if it's not a fit, uh, am I able to renounce to someone that is more fit? Your destiny is your own. I just want you to know that it was not a mistake or a coincidence. That you were crowned the Witchlight Monarch. Uh, in which case, I will, uh, I will accept. And uh, and Keeks and Keeks perches up on my shoulder and uh, goes, "I didn't think you were gonna be a schmuck about this." <laughs> <laughs> she gives like a small laugh and uh, she puts a hand on your shoulder. She looks at you. She goes, You bring joy wherever you go. That is extremely noble. Thank you. I still owe you one, as they say. <laughs> she kind of winks at you again. Right. She turns her attention. To Harper. My dedicated associate. I could live another thousand years and not thank you enough. What can I grant you? Well. Since being back here, I did go rummaging through my mum's belongings, and I did find a letter as to the assumed whereabouts of her location, where she had been sent to. I'd like her back. She nods. She goes, I had much time to think these past few years. I deeply regretted separating you at such a young age. It is only fair that I reunite you she begins to swirl the cauldron once more. And a fiery red heat appears from it. She begins to sweat. She's like concentrating really hard and her speech switches to infernal. <laughs> and uh, she is at it for a bit. She's at it for like a, a couple minutes. Everyone's kind of like awkwardly like, uh, yeah. So, <laughs> and uh, everyone waits with bated breath. And finally, she, uh, cracks a smile, and her whole top half like reaches into the cauldron. <laughs> And she pulls out a uh, a, a tawny heron gone. Uh, she is in absolutely ragged robes. Her whiskers are long and low. Uh, one ear is flopped and one ear is uh, up. Oh. 
cute. She is a slightly lighter color than um, Harper is, but the same eyes. Um, and she sort of like, uh, kind of like tumbles onto the floor and you see the queen like, kind of like whisper at her. She goes, it's all right now. So sorry. And you see Harper's mother get up and just immediately run into Harper's arms. I'm so sorry, darling. I I promised I would be right back and I I was kidnapped and it was horrible. I'm so glad that you're alive and I, I you rescued Sybilna. It, it's She's just like I think crying. Harper is just like stunned with everything that's happened within the last five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> everything in the last 20 minutes has been like a whole lot. Yeah. Um, and she like, it's like in the movies where it's like someone's hugging you and you're just kind of like in shock so you're not hugging them back and then it's that slow like my arms finally reach up and embrace her and shock has really just hit me like oh shit like like this is my mom like my mom is finally here um and i begin to nuzzle my, my face in the nape of her neck and i cry tears of joy um just embracing her uh you just hear her over her say over and over again, I'm so sorry, darling, I'm so sorry. Um, and Zybilna sort of uh, looks sadly at the two of them, obviously, like, regretful. And uh, she sort of, like, addresses the, the rest of the crowd. She goes, Valor's Call, you have proven yourselves to be the finest in all of Prismir. I'm sure there will be uh, many questions and uh, many boons I owe you. Uh, please uh, feel free to roam the castle as you see fit. I'm sure we would all like a bit of rest and some solace for the evening. She sort of uh, waves her hand over the cauldron once more, and you guys hear the calliope music start to kind of like drift in through the hall as, as Zybilna sort of like begins to like kind of round everyone up and like push them out of the hall, leaving the party alone with the cauldron and, uh, Harper's mom. Nice. Well? Um, Zindi is, like, crying. Is, like, kind of just so, so overwhelmed by emotion. Um, uh, and, um, goes, oh, me. Um, uh, and, uh, turns to, um, to Juniper Berry and just, like, blubbering, goes, To Juniper Berry, I, you are your own creature. You do not have to come with me to the Witchlight Carnival. I would like you to make your own decision. I love you regardless. Mm -hmm. Oh. You see Juniper, like, butts her head into Zindi, and she goes, I was... I was hoping that, um... I could actually go go with you. I've never seen the Material Realm, and also, I have a really great idea for an act. Oh, really? What is it? Uh, Zindi stops kind of crying. Uh, okay. An act? 
So instead of like a lion tamer, what about owl bear tamer? Not the owl bear tamer. <laughs> but are you? Would you taming you? But you're you're intelligent and uh, articulate. Well, it would it would all be it would all be you know for show for show. What if you were taming me? Oh, I like it. We can workshop it. They start like the they start chat. <laughs> they start chattering. <laughs> I'm excited. Uh, Snoodles, Snoodles snorts up and goes, "Come going with the owls." <laughs> going with the keys. Back to the soggy court. <laughs> <laughs> we're going home, Saya. We're going home. <laughs> as uh, as you guys sort of revel in your uh, victory, and you uh, listen, goes, yeah, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Uh, Keeks fl- uh, fly- uh, flies up and is like, "I'm gonna have royal robes." It's not just gonna be a shitty cave for me, it's going to be a castle. <laughs> I'm gonna get my own cape and everything. <laughs> uh, as the uh, Calliope plays on, you guys hear um, the voice of Eliwick Tumblestrum singing in the distance. Um, as she plays her lute. Toss a coin to your wizard, O Valley of Prismere, O Valley of Prismere, oh. Toss a coin to your wizard, O Valley of Prismere. And that is the end of our story, guys. Oh, well, my God, we did it. Um, did it. I have such an I have a really early morning tomorrow. But <laughs> would you guys be open to do like a like decompress slash yeah. like 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 next week? I don't know. Maybe like I don't know. D, if you have like a little mini epilogue or kind of like loose ends where we also just sure. like I don't know ask questions about the plot Absolutely. and stuff like that. Absolutely, we can like have that. a recap. We okay. can have a recap great, last, great, great. last session. Uh, so Hooray. Monday yes. Yes, session yes, yes, forty yes. will be our epilogue, last one. Great. Uh, but yes, the adventure has completed, and we are.